impressive how you volunteered to help out with the bank heist in Aquila City. Yeah, I read all the reports. I learned quickly that in Neon, staying informed and staying alive are closely linked. What stood out to me was that you didn't lose a single hostage. No wonder the Marshal tried to recruit you right away. If he hadn't, it would have made him look like a fool having some random stranger step in and do the job. trying to hold up a bank here, they'd be gunned down without a moment's hesitation. Hostages are not. There are two things you don't do in there. One, you don't mess with Bayou's money, and two, you don't take Aurora off-world. But you understand that, don't you? That's why you just told me that you won't cause trouble. Keep that in mind, and you'll fit right in. Factory? <laughs> Damn, that's pretty impressive. Well, here's the thing. Neon's got no end of shipjackers. I see them come and go every day. It's tough for a guy to remember one from the other. You know what I mean? I can see where this is going. Yeah, well, I'm one of them. I can help you. But right now, my life is in danger, and I haven't even done anything wrong. Freestar Rangers are supposed to protect the innocent, right? Then you need to hear this. It's about my brother. He died while still in debt to a syndicate loan shark by the name of Emmett Goodman. Now, Goodman's coming after me to collect. He says if I don't pay up, I'm a dead man. This Emmett Goodman sounds like a real class act. <sighs> yeah. He's bad, even by Neon standards. <laughs> That's saying something. From where I'm standing, seems like our problems are intertwined like a couple of fuel lines and a thruster assembly. Uh, is this really what we're doing? I do understand. I'm trying to figure out a way to help you, okay? Okay, okay. Had to try, right? The woman you're looking for is named Grace Early. Stealing ships is her line of work. She usually comes here to sell the goods. Rumor has it she just finished a job for some mercenary outfit. And she's been throwing money around, so must have paid well. I know her. When she isn't out on a job, she's a regular at Madame Sauvage's. That's on the upper platform. I'll back you up. Well, what about me? You just gonna leave me twisting in the wind here? If I were you, I'd get the hell out of Neon and start over somewhere else. I don't think 
this day could get any better. I'm not sure who they are, but they... Yeah, there were four guys. Kind of stood out because they were all wearing... After they talked, the four guys took off in the Hope Tech ship. Back to work, I guess. Be careful around here. Not everyone that stays in our sleep crates for rent. It's tight, but it's home. If you're struggling, sleep crates are the budget accommodation choice of Neon. It's tight, it's got a smell that's an acquired taste. If you're in the market for a sleep crate, they sadly sell themselves because they're very, very cheap. That they do. It's the families that really get me. And when those families can no longer even afford a sleep crate, well, that's just my favorite part of the job. Good for you. You can at least get some privacy that way. No weird stains, save the ones you spill. And it just so happens we have a deluxe shipping crate that recently came on the market. Built for cargo, redesigned for people. Just the thing for a minimalist like yourself. It's an artist's way of saying less is more. Minimalism is about shedding life's excesses. One night in a sleep crate and your desires, comfort, and hygiene will molt away. Smart choice. I'd say you dodged a bullet, but you're the one holding the gun. I have a lot of crates ready for you. How long will you be staying? Nice meeting you. your crew Still cheap. I think you'll agree my rate is fair why is that I can see that sorry but I can't there's nothing to talk about I've already made myself clear that's the best offer you're gonna get from me Fine. See you around. You didn't see anything. Catch my drift. Hey, get away from me. Astral Lounge, Euphorica, blah, blah, blah. This place is where it's at. What are you looking at? This? This is Ebside Striker's turf. Only the upstairs. Don't bother my customers. Fine, upstairs. That's gang territory, got it? This is what's missing these days. This. It's called respect. Yeah, you used to be people were afraid of the strikers. We had a name, got it? Now the disciples got us penned up in this lousy bar. Andrea. Fine, fine, fine. This beautiful establishment. Do you have anything else, or are we done with this? Whatever this is. We were one of the big dogs. We could take what we wanted and no one gave us shit. And Briggs? Total class act. Not a psycho like the disciples. Now look at us. 
I mean, the strikers will rob you blind, and if you back us in a corner, you're gonna bleed. But the disciples? Total nutjob animals. They torture people for kicks. And the only people that kept them from getting out of control? Us. And now we're all but ruined. So you stroll in here and want to meet with Briggs? The nerve. Maybe you should meet with the business end of my shiv, huh, tourist? No blood in my shop, Andrea. I'm this close to tossing the lot of you out on the street. Fine, fine already. You're lucky. Only way you see Briggs is if you, uh, <laughs> want to join the upside strikers. <sighs> oh, nothing. Joining us now is great. People are banging down our door to go down with this ship. Yeah, yeah, catch you later. I've uh, got some stuff on my mind, when you have the time. So how much of a thrill has it been traveling with the one and only last descendant of the great Solomon Co? Is it everything you imagined? <laughs> well, that's a first. I gotta say, it's a relief being with you. So many people hear Cole and they expect me to pull some miracle out of a hat. Time has a way of just building on itself. Solomon was a good man. Great one, even. But if he ever heard all the bullshit being talked about him these days, he'd flat out deck him. It appears I left him in my other jacket. Sorry. But, really, for some people, it ain't a joke. They have serious expectations. Yeah, there, uh, there was a time, well before Cora, where it really weighed on me. I felt like every little thing I did or didn't do was a reflection on our great legacy. It's enough to drive you crazy. Now I just hope I can help Cora to... <laughs> I don't know. Well then, Cora's gonna get a five-star university education from me. For my father, Cora, and me, everything starts and ends with Solomon Coe. He looked out at the stars and he dreamed a way to get there. Imagine being the first person to jump into a new system, set foot on a new world. Well, I get it, that's powerful stuff, and now, I'm just getting sappy. You're a bad influence, you know that? You say the damnedest things. Well, I hope the comic book they make about our adventures is better than that rag on Solomon. The stuff they publish is just downright embarrassing. Second a chat? I'm in the market for a job that'll get me out of neon. If you need some muscle on your crew, I might be your girl. I think so. I've never been on one before, but I'm a quick learner and I'm trained for combat. I hear the space lanes are getting more dangerous every day. It might be nice to have a tough chick around, right? <laughs> Man, am I glad to hear that. So, before we finalize anything, not everybody likes associating with gangs. One of Neon's biggest gangs. We mostly are. No, 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 of course not. I wouldn't involve you in any kind of trouble. The gang's leaders know I'm planning to take a contract job off-world. Thanks. That's a big relief. 
<sighs> I'm glad I got... Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to discuss my salary. I'll accept your standard going rate, not a credit. Okay, as long as you aren't trying to screw me. Nice words. Uh, let's not close the door on this just yet. I hear you. <sighs> okay, fine, I'll take it. Something's better than nothing. I'm really sorry to hear that. Just think it over for a bit. If you change your mind, I'd be happy to renegotiate. Oh, great. Just who I don't want to see. A three-star ranger right in his... <laughs> what are you? A sidekick or something? Well, I'm sure your mom is real proud. So how come I'm talking to the sidekick instead of the ranger? Uh, this is the deputy's case. Is that so? And you had to bring backup just for little old me? <laughs> I'm flattered. Anyway, this ain't my first interrogation, so let's just get on with it. Aw, oh, ain't you polite. I'm guessing this is the part where you tell me that you've got questions and that you expect me to answer them. That sound about right? All right, so I jacked a ship. It was just a little fun. I didn't even keep it. It was a job. I turned it over to some men and they took off for who knows where. End of story. Nothing I did put anyone in danger, okay? All I did was provide them with transportation. They didn't say anything about where they were going or why. Look, I wouldn't have gotten involved if I thought anyone would be hurt. I've got no love for violence. Not asking questions is just as bad as giving consent. If that woman had been killed, you'd be an accessory to murder. Did you think about that? I... No, I... I guess I didn't. It's not that simple. Maybe I can make an exception. Yeah, I hope so. I'm still willing to talk. I'm glad you understand the position I'm in here. I guess if I can't trust a free star ranger, then I can't trust anyone, right? I was approached by a woman named Maya Cruz. Said she was a senior member of the first and that she had a job for me. She was working with someone inside Hope Tech and pitched me on the idea of jacking a ship right out of the factory. We were deep into planning the job when she had some kind of medical emergency. She said she needed surgery and would be in recovery for a long time. That was a few weeks ago. I haven't heard from her since. Only some kind of offhanded comment about their client wanting to expand the operation ahead of schedule. In my line of work, you learn not to ask a lot of questions. It tends to make people uncomfortable. No, but it sounded serious. She was upset. Seemed kind of shaken, you know? Didn't seem right I should pry, so I didn't. <laughs> you serious? Take your pick. Money, reputation, the thrill of it. All good reasons.
Not long after that, I got a message from a guy named Marco. He said he was the money man for the first, and he offered half up front. Never met him directly, though. It was always through intermediaries and using encrypted slates. Got the feeling he was paranoid as hell. Do you have one of those encrypted slates on you right now? Yeah. Here, take it. I'm done with all this. Anything else you want to know? No. Nothing at all. Left me feeling a little disappointed, given how well they paid me. Not so much as a hint. I'll tell you, he's as cagey a fixer as I've ever met. Bankroll in the first must take a lot of money. I'm sure he's got all kinds of side hustles going on. Nothing, really. I was told when... Yeah. Sure. Next time you're at The Rock, you should give that encrypted slate to Ranger Alex Shadid. He's got a gift for cryptography. If anyone, I'm gonna head back. Good luck, Dip. Then I'm free to go. Oh. Uh, you're welcome. Guess I ain't used to the law being so polite. What a city, am I right? the town, buddy. I'm gonna do you a favor. Head back to Bayou Plaza before the disciples get you. A gang. Worst gang there is. They'll stab you for kicks, taking bets on how long you squeal before you bleed out. And that's not a hyper whatchamacallit. They say... We gotta look out for each other, right? Us crate rats used to think the Ebside strikers were awful with all the muggings and shakedowns, but now that they're on the ropes, kinda wish they weren't just holed up in Madame Sauvage's. Streets are getting bad, real bad. I mean, yeah, they'll rob you blind, but at least they let you live. They're bad news, but compared to disciples, positive angels. Well, you'll find them at Madame Sauvage's. They're always holding auditions, as they call it. Looking for new blood. So, for being so helpful, what with the disciples and all? You can't blame a fellow for trying, right? If you have any questions about our spacecraft, don't hesitate to ask. On behalf of Strout Eklund, I'd like to, well, our company prides itself as the... We use groundbreaking technology to give us a significant advantage over our competitors. 
You can configure your desired spacecraft at any one of our conveniently located kiosks. If you have any questions, I'm simply giving you an insight into what we call the Strout Eklant difference. Feel free to have a look around our. Actually, I've been working here for only two years. Previously, I was an Alboron sales representative, but that type of work wasn't for me. I could never relate to the type of clientele that purchases weapons. But spacecraft have always held a certain fascination in my mind. It was comfortable working under Ryujin's banner, but despite all of my requests, they wouldn't transfer me to the Taiyo Astroneering Division. And so, here we are. He's been to Neon a few times, but I haven't had the pleasure of his company for more than a few minutes at the most. What I can say is that, despite what's been reported by the media, Mr. Strad is a rational luminary with uniquely future forward vision. May all your journeys be safe ones. Clover over at Kelcorp? She's too good for Neon. Sounds... someone or something honestly I kind of tuned her out
five jumps successful. Just Welcome to Free Star Space. We're gonna do a quick scan for contraband. You can be on your way. You're good to go. Feel for the folk in the stretch. I try and give a credit or two to the locals. Excuse me. Maple. Welcome to the rock, I guess. Work hard, play hard. A lot of famous people visit Aquila. Pop the back of beer, you never know. New deputy, huh? Honor to have you. Better this than big. Hey, I wondered when you might come by. I'm Alex. Nia's report said you were heading for Neon? I've always wanted to go there. What did you think? Oh, I can't fly anywhere. Issues with my Eustachian tubes. Being in a pressurized environment is like someone taking a laser cutter to the sides of my head. It's not great. But at least I can pretend to visit the party capital of the galaxy by having you tell me about it. Yeah, I bet. It just sounds so exciting and so stimulating. Probably makes Aquila City look like the more boring backwater town in the settled systems by comparison. Alas, I'll have to experience it vicariously through you and the other rangers. So how'd it go? Turn up anything useful? Come to daddy, my sweet little mystery slate. I see lots of coffee and late nights ahead. Now, if you get any more of these, bring them to me. It helps if I can compare different... Just look for me up here. I have no life, so I'm not usually hard to find. You're counting on me. You know I outrank you, right? 
please and thank you go a long way when addressing your betters, rookie. Welcome back. Any luck finding out who stole that ship from Hope Tech? Glad you got a chance to meet him. Sounds like you're making real progress. That ain't for you to decide. I want you focused on the job at hand, not on a promotion. <laughs> the Rangers ain't like being a security guard. You earn your place among them. What did you learn from this starship thief? Well done, Deputy. Sounds like you've got a couple of new leads to follow up on. I have a guess who. I served with Maya Cruz. She's a technical genius and an expert hacker. I could give you some background if you want it, or we can go straight to planning your next move. They said she was a child prodigy, which probably explains her arrogance. Even so, she was fiercely loyal to Major Hull. I don't think she'd ever give him up. If you find her, don't expect her to cooperate. There was a mech driver in the 1st Cavalry named Marco Graziani. He came from money. And when the 1st Cav got a reputation as the top unit, he transferred in. Rumor was that bribes made it happen. Marco had a knack for getting hold of anything we needed. There was talk, the family fortune came from smuggling, and I believe it. He had this dream to become a wealthy businessman when he got out. But I guess that got put on hold when they locked him up. Like what? Around the time he got out of jail, we started hearing Marco's name in circulation. Word is he's heading up a smuggling racket. Based on what you've learned, I'd presume he's funneling his ill-gotten gains to the first. Ranger Autumn McMillan is out at Red Mile right now looking into the smuggling operation. I suggest you pool your resources. Uh, just remember, that's... Most likely place would be the clinic. They also guarantee privacy. Ranger Ben Armistead is... Your priority is... Just remember that you're... In other words, you ain't... Good hunting, Dick. You know, the way you handle things is... Not bad. Not bad. Later.
Period. I understand that. I'm not blaming you directly. Dr. Salvato, how long have you been here? Uh, about a year now, Doctor. And in that year, how many times have we had this conversation about late or missing shipments of supplies? I believe this is the third time. Yes, that sounds right. Three times. I will be making Anything it I can help you with? to your superiors that lives are at stake. Okay, sure. We'll take care of any holes. If your company cannot... Okay. Yes, ma'am. Understood. Thank you, Dr. Salvato. You may return to your duties. Whatever you do, don't let anyone in here sneak. Oh, well, that's appreciated. There really isn't anything you're qualified to do in here. No offense, of course. But, hmm. I do have some data requests from other facilities in the settled systems. Everyone always wants to know what we're up to. Usual courier has been less than reliable lately. So if you could get this slate where it needs to go, that would help us, and put a few credits in your pocket. It's really a matter of safety, believe it or not. The types of things we work with here... Let's just say you wouldn't want them spreading on a populated planet. In here, we're all night. Not the most comforting thought, but it's the truth. Tending physician, I'm new here, so really what I do is watch Dr. Darvish's every move and try to imitate it. Sounds a lot less impressive when I say it out loud. Dr. Darvish is, let's say, exacting when it comes to medical supplies, but we can spare a few things. Take care of yourself. It's a grab drive. Welcome to the clinic. I'm hearing faster. Are you? Because I don't have any appointments scheduled. We have a particular focus on astrovirology here. So the patients we take on tend to have unusual cases that require long-term care, and sometimes require unorthodox or experimental treatments. We have an excellent track record that speaks for itself, but it doesn't leave room for much else. Whatever business you may be here for, I trust that you will conduct it quickly and do so without interfering with my staff or our operations. 
There are hundreds, if not thousands, of new worlds that humanity has set foot on. While many don't host some sort of life, there are more than enough that do. Any one of those worlds could be inhabited by all manner of pathogens. Things we've never seen and have no idea how to treat. Someone has to try and stay ahead of what could be a very deadly curve. Here at the clinic, we do our best. If we do it right, no, not usually. An abundance of safety protocols are in place, and we have decades of experience. Ironically, this may be one of the safest environments in the settled systems. I am, yes. I took over from Dr. Eswaran when he retired nine years ago. While the clinic does occasionally take on research projects that have their own chain of command, I am ultimately responsible for the entire facility. The clinic has occasionally been faced with unique situations that might be considered hazardous in other facilities, but no, nothing that could not be contained and dealt with. I'm afraid that information is confidential and restricted to our corporate partners funding the projects. Certainly. Take care. If people would stop poking them, would you now? Well, I suppose we could always use additional research specimens. The more data we have about what's out there in the settled systems, the faster we can die. I suppose we could consider you an independent contractor of sorts. Naturally occurring sealants can have valuable applications for medical research. We can always use more examples of them. What we're looking for are basic organic substances. They could come from any number of flora or fauna. Just keep your eyes open as you travel and harvest things. Or frankly, if you can find them at a reasonable price somewhere, purchase them. I'm less concerned with the source than the materials themselves. Not exactly a hotbed of criminal activity here, is it? Well, that suits me fine. Yeah? yeah. Oh, now hold on a minute. You're the new deputy, ain't you? Yeah, the marshal's been sending it. Pretty well caught up on things. Ben Armistead. Well, I guess that's the long and short of it. You're the newest member of the Rangers, and I'm the oldest. How you doing, old man? Well, I'll be a Dust Wrangler's cousin, Sam Coe. Oh, it's been too damn long. Why, Cora must be, what, nine, ten years old by now? <laughs> I wish. She's twelve. <sighs> Almost a teenager? My goodness. And here I thought I had enough gray hairs already. So, are you back? Oh, no, no, nothing like that. I'm just out here to watch the deputies back and see what kind of trouble we can get into. I see. Well, back to the matter at hand, then. So, is one of them first mercenaries here at the clinic? Every ranger knows it's important to trust your instincts. No better place in the settled systems to get medical treatment. <laughs> you can bet it beats anything them UC piglets got. Ironic, given they're the ones who built it. I know just the man who can help you. Right this way, deputy. Just between you and me, I'm not entirely sure why someone felt the need to station a ranger. I'm not much more than a glorified bodyguard for Dr. Darvish.
Why do they even bother locking it? I'll try to help you, but our computer systems have been having some issues. Huh. Well, we don't give the patients free access to our computer systems, so... Yeah, still, it's worth keeping it. So who's the suspect you're after? Former soldier, huh? Yeah, they say war changes people forever. Makes me sad, the thought of soldiers who come home and don't fit in anymore. <laughs> 